Welcome to TradersArmy.com, defending your right to build wealth and preserve capital for generations to come. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today's edition of the Daily Market Commentary. I'm your host, Chuck Fulkerson. Hope everybody had an amazing trading day yesterday. For those of you new to the channel, do me a favor, click that subscribe button down below uh, so that you get the updates as they become available. Also, uh, don't forget, I know a number of you have already signed up, but Sunday, August the 12th, go to tradersarmy.com. It's our first live trading room. We're going to be focusing on options, swing trades uh, in that session. So try to make the trading room pretty uh, pretty engaging, something that you guys are going to enjoy doing and, and make it uh, make it something where it's, uh, it's scalable so that pretty much anybody can afford to do it. So go visit tradersarmy.com so that you can learn a little bit more. So let's dive right in. S&P 500. So yesterday I had a little reversal trade down here, and we got a little bit of a bounce off of it. And when I say a little bit of a bounce off of it, I mean a little bit of a bounce off of it. Um, we hit the level and then got a little bitty bounce, about seven or eight points, but really it came just to the opposing fair price value area. So, you know, it was a it was a nice little three to one move. Um, but not a whole lot else happening beyond that. So um, hopefully you're able to catch a little bit of that move. I'm going to take that thing off now. Uh, so that's a nice little short-term trade for those of you able to catch it. What I think now is that we could have a potential breakdown, uh, and really we could break one way or the other um, You know, on here. We could have a, uh, a breakdown. I, I guess I'd go kind of below this area. Uh, below that zone that I had yesterday, uh, we could get a breakdown below this area here. The other side is we could get a breakout to the upside. I mean, whenever you're chopping along sideways like this, this is typically a a pretty weak pattern, uh, and and not a pattern that that's going to give me a whole bunch of uh, a, you know a whole bunch of strong breakouts um, on these kind of uh, on these kind of patterns. When I look at this on a four hour chart. A little bit bigger time period, and and I always go to that bigger time period. That four hour chart is is really helps me to determine, you know, am I a buyer or am I a seller? We've gotten a little bit of a pullback off of this move, right? So big move up, a little bit of a pullback, and and now we've started to kind of come off of there. Now, I frankly don't think that this was a deep enough pullback to get us a solid entry. I'd rather see a pullback almost down to call it this area here. Um, that's a that's a that's a more I guess the word would be healthy pullback um, for for price to kind of come back into that region. And so just something to consider, Oops, that was not what I wanted to do. I deleted the wrong line. Um, it's something to consider is I, I, I want I want pullbacks that are big enough for me to get back in. Now, uh, that being said, could we still get a breakout to the upside? You bet your patootie. Uh, it could pop up to the upside and we could get a nice run. What I don't love are these upper wicks that we've gotten. A couple of upper wicks uh, typically indicate that there's some weakness brewing, and that's kind of what we see there. So um, i to remove those old lines there. So a little bit of weakness brewing in there. Now that's the S&P. Looking at the NASDAQ, now in the NASDAQ yesterday, uh, conversely, I thought, okay, if we break out above here, we're going to go. And we haven't gone. Now, remember the rules on a breakout. You place your stop below the last pivot low, and this is a pretty far pivot low. So technically, you still haven't been stopped out on this breakout. If you took the, the breakout long, you should still be in it if you're following all of the rules. My guess is most people don't have enough risk tolerance to put your stop way down here below that last pivot. Um, and so you probably get stopped out on a bit of a pullback. If you're not willing to take that big of a loss don't trade the futures contract, right? That's where it becomes an opportunity to trade the QQQ or options of the QQQ in lieu so that you can still follow the rules. So this still has the opportunity, I think, uh, if you didn't get in the first time around, I still think that this could be a breakout to the upside uh, as we are just kind of hopping around in here. Now, on a, on a four-hour chart of the NASDAQ, you'll see that we don't have anywhere near the pullback that we did in the S&P. So the NASDAQ is actually less of a pullback than the S&P, uh, and we're coming close to our brand new all-time high again. So, um, you know, am I shorting any of these? Not really. I just don't see a reason to short when I'm this close to the all-time high. Just my own personal belief. 
Crude oil, short that pig if you want. Um, you know, I was hoping yesterday that we would get a rally back up to the top of this slide. Uh, we did not, obviously, and so uh, we have found a little bit of support, but yesterday crude oil just fell precipitously. It was a very strong drop. Um, even looking at this on a daily chart, you'll see that this was one of the biggest, you know, red candles. Now, I want to talk about this for a minute because, and and uh, and shout outs to, uh, to B-Dub, uh, if anybody knows Brandon Wendell, he taught me this a long time ago. He taught me about this concept of price shock. Um, and uh, price shock is when you've got a predominant trend going one way, but then all of a sudden you start to get gigantic uh, opposite color candlesticks from the direction of your trend, right? So though we have... Uh, a, a pretty strong upward trend over a, over a longer period of time, the price shock comes in when we see that we've got these big red candlesticks um, that that are that are happening here, and that's a that's a telltale sign of momentum shifting. That's a really strong sign that momentum has shifted uh, in these candlesticks overall. So uh, when I look at this on say a Oh, excuse me, I was already on the daily chart. When I look at this on, say, a weekly chart, uh, we we can see that we've got a move up and a pullback, a move up and a slightly deeper pullback, a move up and an even deeper pullback. Um, and so when I throw on uh, my momentum studies, and I typically use MACD for momentum studies, um, when you're just looking at the momentum overall, what we'll probably see is that I, even though I have h higher swing highs in price, I have lower swing highs in my momentum. See, these two swing highs are higher than one another. I have lower swing highs in my momentum. Does that mean that price is going to make a strong reversal? No, because look here, I had higher swing highs in price and lower swing highs in momentum. It doesn't mean that price is going to make a reversal and that we're going to and that we're going to um, fall through. However, <clears throat> um, I do have a definite indication that my momentum is waning, and so I I think that this is a a possible indication that we could see a breakdown overall in crude oil over the course of the next few weeks. So just keep that in mind as you know as we are as we're coming out of the summer months. Uh, as we're coming out of the summer months and, and heading into heading into winter. All right, uh, gold, gold. Here's another fun one where I said, "Hey, we're going to get a breakout, psych," uh, and it, and it just didn't happen. You know, I had the triangle pattern yesterday. I do like those triangle patterns; they usually do me some good. Uh, they did not yesterday, so we uh, we did not uh, did definitely got to stop out on the gold uh, as it as it uh, broke the triangle pattern and 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 uh, and it was like, "Oh yeah, baby, here we go," and then here we don't, uh, and that's okay, right? You're going to take losses. Everybody takes losses. It's all about how we handle them going forward. What do I have in the next iteration? of trades for gold right now? Nothing. Um, I'm going to hold off for just a little bit. Possibly could be a breakdown below here, but for right now, I'm going to leave that be. Let's look at our bond market and our currency markets. So bonds, you know, those of you that, that follow this daily market commentary on a regular basis know that there was a there was a string there that we were really trading bonds. I mean, like we were hitting them for weeks in a row, uh, but that was really during this trending period, right? Now, almost this whole year, um, the whole year, almost this whole like last few months, nothing as it's really just been a whole lot of <laughs> in between areas. And so I'm going to kind of continue to look at it, but nothing really to force, uh, the Aussie. So the Aussie, we had a, uh, a potential little level in here where price came through, blew through that little bitty level. Um, and then from there we've, we've rallied up. So the Aussie, it blew through the area. Now, those of you that took the wider level, meaning you took the whole, uh, zone because this was a little bit of a fair price value area above a pivot low. If you included the pivot low in your zone, then you definitely did not get stopped out and were able to uh, to maintain that trade. So this is actually, I, I showed this one yesterday, but I just wanted to highlight it again today. Um, wasn't a new trade. So uh, on the euro, we have the area up here, uh, still have not come to that level yet. You know, this area here, we bounced off of it a couple of times. It's getting a bit weaker. We could get a breakdown from there, and there could be another reversal down in here. So keep an eye on this area down here in the euro as we arrive there later today. 
Uh, and then in the Canadian dollar. So the Canadian dollar, we did get a pretty good little breakout. We came back up and retested it, and now it's falling from there again. So I think that means you get another bite at the apple. Uh, <clears throat> or you probably, uh, ideally, maybe even took some profits uh, as we started to run down there yesterday. So now I'm going to remove these lines, as these ones are. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to leave the top line up, but the bottom line is no longer valid. So uh, one triangle pattern that stopped us out in gold and one that worked out really well. So I'll, uh, I'll take that any day that I can get it. Next, Nat Gas. We are chopping sideways here in natural gas. So that's this is typically a breakout pattern on a on a on a high and tight base. So let's see what that high and tight base does. On our uh, Great British Pound trade, we have still not gotten a higher swing high, and I just don't know if we're going to get it. Um, a candle with a higher high once we've once we've broken through here. So if we come if we come through here today with any sort of force, then I'll just totally shut this trade off. Remember, this was a candle to candle opportunity, and right now we've not gotten a candle with a higher high yet, and that's why you do candle to candle style of trading because it's it's definitely a confirmation style keeps you from getting in on a bad trade. Why do we pick that level in the first place? Well, let's go back and look. It was that little bit of basing before this very strong move up. Now, just like in the uh, in the Aussie trade that I showed earlier, there's a possibility that this whole area could be could be our fair price value area, and we could still get a reversal from here. But from what I have in place, I'm looking for a candle with a higher high. Don't have it yet. Uh, Japanese yen. We you know on the Japanese yen. For those of you that trade trend lines, we are sitting just about on that lower trend line. We're getting a decent reversal. Uh, I would have expected the reversal to come a bit lower into here uh, off this re this level here, but there is an opportunity to get long right at this little reversal here, uh, picking up on that uh, that running trend line. And then copper. So copper, we got a setup in here. Not a whole lot happening in here. Feels like this level's not going to work out. So all in all, kind of a mixed day. Couple of winners. Frankly, I think I had more losers than winners um, over the last uh, over the last two days. Uh, but the key is is that you've got tight stops on the losers and you allow the winners to run. Uh, there's still a couple of them that are still alive and well. Uh, and let's see what happens to those over the course of the the rest of the day and really as we head into the weekend. So till tomorrow, everybody. Hope you have a great trading day, and I will see you soon. Later.